Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. Every year since 1998, right around the 4th of July, the New England Muzzle Awards have been bestowed on the perpetrators of significant offenses against freedom of speech and freedom of the press. And since those rights are essential to a functioning democracy and political system, we like to take a moment every July to share some of them and to delve into the important issues they raise. So joining me this weekend, the author of the awards, which are hosted on the website of Boston's public radio station, WGBH-FM, journalism professor Dan Kennedy of Northeastern University. Professor, welcome. Thank you, John. Good to be here. Good to have you. So we don't have enough time to get into all the ground covered by the awards this year. We'll remind you of where you can go online to read them for yourself at the end of our conversation. But it's worth noting, in my mind at least, that while some of the offenses are committed by familiar suspects, police who think it's okay to attack peaceful protesters, politicians trying to squelch speech they don't like, you have one case study here, one award winner, uh, involving Black Lives Matter protesters who destroyed hundreds of copies of a Burlington, Vermont newspaper that wrote a story they disapproved of. Tell us about that one and about left-wing suppression of free speech at a time when right-wing suppression deservedly gets most of the headlines. Well, first of all, let me just say that I do think that right-wing suppression of free speech does deserve more attention because there's more of it. Uh, but the left is not entirely uh, innocent either, as, as you point out. And the a uh, particular muzzle that you're talking about involves the alternative weekly newspaper, uh, Seven Days, itself a very progressive uh, outlet uh, that did some very tough critical reporting uh, on a Black Lives Matter encampment uh, that had taken place for, oh, going on for weeks in Burlington, Vermont. And when the story came out, uh, the protesters just grabbed copies of the paper, took them off the newsstand so that other people wouldn't be able to read the coverage, uh, and destroyed them, burning some of them, and uh, chanted in the streets about what a terrible thing Seven Days had done in casting a skeptical eye on their protest. Uh, the co-publisher of Seven Days, Paula Routley, uh, issued a statement that uh, said, you know, this just goes against everything that they supposedly stand for. Is this kind of behavior, not so much actually seizing and burning newspapers, but this kind of, uh, of aggressive backlash, uh, uh, whether it's from the right or the left, is it more common now than in the past, would you say? Well, I've been doing the Muzzle Awards for 25 years, 24 years, so, and there's always been a lot to choose from. Uh, but I would say that the general, uh, I would almost call it hatred of the media, has uh, permeated down to the local level, so that I think it is much more likely to see this kind of attack on freedom of the press at the local level uh, these days than it might have been a few years ago. And I think there are a variety of things that we can blame for that. Uh, you, there is Donald Trump's anti-press rhetoric and uh, falling public trust in the media. And uh, it occasionally bursts out into antics like we saw in Burlington. 